So we go through what your idea is and then how can we launch it and not just putting out into the world and seeing what happens, but constantly iterating with purpose. One of the things that I struggled with for a long time, and I'm just still learning is APIs. So in this training, this is for the complete beginners, uh, beginner of understanding what APIs are what the scope could possibly be for you in the future, and then allowing you to gain confidence because if you see different API documentation, maybe you want to start drinking after looking at those pages, this will allow you to feel comfortable, take a deep breath, and then be effective when you do this. So we're gonna go through this. And as we go through each section, you're gonna be able to ask questions or put in the chat. And then again, like at the end, we'll, we'll have everything. So you'll be able to see this in one moment. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so first of all, what in the world <laughs> does API stand for? API stands for Application Programming Interface. So what is an API? Let's just talk about basics. It's a tool to talk to each other system to get information. So it's one system talking to another. Now you might say, wait a minute, doc, this is too much for me. I don't even know what an API is. I've never interacted with it or anything like that. What is, <laughs> what is hemp oil? Okay, so this was last night. We were talking about this. It's a long story. Someone wanted me in multi, it is not the point why this is here. But if we look at this right here and we're seeing google.com slash, and if you see this right here, right? Where it says slash search, and then it says question mark Q, and then it's saying Q equals what plus is plus hemp plus oil. Now, if we're looking at this right here in the browser, that is calling to a server. You're calling to something to get a response. So if you've ever used Google, and I think some of you have, you are familiar with the format of what's about to happen. Okay, so you can definitely do this. Now, we're going to be talking about this. And by the way, Mark's here as well. And if you don't know who Mark Fletcher is, he's awesome. And he does a great job explaining. And by the way, um, I paid five other consultants to teach me how to use APIs. And Mark did a great job teaching me. And I, we, we do a lot of projects together. And he is excellent one-on-one. -on -one. So he has a program, everything like that. If you're interested in APIs or anything with spreadsheets, you got to hit him up. He's awesome. So this could not be possible without learning from him. So as we go through it, we just talked about what is an API? What does it do? Let's just go for a moment, an example. Let's just make it real, real basic, okay? So an API is something just like if you've gone into a library. If you go into a library and you ask the librarian, hey, I'm looking for a book about lions or some type of animal with four feet, legs, whatever, the librarian is just going to say, okay, gotcha. I know where that is. They go up onto the third floor. They find the exact book. They bring it back down to you. And they're saying, hey, here's a book about lions. Here you go. So you're asking for a request. The, the librarian is getting something. That's the same exact thing you're doing with APIs. You're asking for something, a call, and you're asking for it to retrieve the information and give it to you. Now, there are other things that you can do with it. You can just read that information, like that book, you open it up and you say, hmm, okay, that's, that's great information. There might be times when you write back in the book and you give it back and now that's part of the book now. Or you might open that book and you're like, lions? Nah, I hate lions. And you just rip out that page, put the book and they put it back. So there's different things that you can do with API calls. API calls, again, you're just getting simply a type of information and then that's happening. So thinking about it just like you're in the library. The other option to think about it as well is if you're familiar with magnets and different magnets are sensitive to different things, you have a magnet that goes over something, it automatically brings up and it pulls that different type of metal. You can also have that same thing happen when you're using APIs. It's automatically pulling information when you're going over something, it's automatically going to get what you're asking for. So keeping that in mind, now we're going to look at the format of how we created this uh, API for complete beginners. In this document, and this is a course is coming out next week about this, and it breaks it down more, you have how to read API documentation, API for beginners key concepts and terms, 
API documentation and projects for complete beginners. Shout out to Mark. It was our project is the project that he showed me and I just documented it. And then also how to use APIs and it's a curated search engine where a lot of people, different no coders are constantly adding how to use APIs in different applications. Like say for instance, how to connect an API in Integromat how to get the Google um, developer console and how do you set it up there? So it's constantly being added. We have uh, Mark and Stephen Campbell. They're just two great people. And then constantly when they're doing things, um, we just document what they're working on. So keeping that in mind, we are now going to go to the project first and then we'll go into key concepts and then we'll ask questions. So for the concept, how to read API documentation for complete beginners. The reason we're doing this here is because a lot of times if you're new to no code or you're in this space, a lot of times you're asking, you might go into like um, Airtable API, something like that, or you wanna look at this and you're like, okay, mm, what I, I need to look into, let's see, mm, documentation, I'm reading this. This is a lot, and it's like, I'm already lost. These things, it, it's just too much. If you're feeling like that, no worries. We're going to be talking about this. So as we go into this, I'm moving this over here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, great. If you're right here, we're going to go through a couple questions before we use an API documentation. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. Before getting started, I want you to write out what is my intention and what do you want to accomplish? Okay, why do we talk about this? Because a lot of times when you're, you're hearing about APIs, you're like, man, I can do so much. I'm going to, I, I just don't know where to begin. Take a step back and just speak or write down like a human. What, what is my intention about the API? What are you trying to do? What do you want to accomplish? And then there's a second thing. What do I want to happen? Write it out like a workflow or a short story. So it depends. If you're used to creating workflows, definitely do it. But if you're more non-technical and you're like, I'm just learning this for the first time, I don't know what to happen. Okay, let's write it out. So this is an example of one, of one of my students. And they said, so if I can use the eBay API documentation to find X easily, if I would like to use that information to display it on Y. So they were asking, first of all, they wanted to find out very specific types of um, Pokemon cards. And they were like, I wanna see if I can do that with, e uh, with eBay. The first question is, if you're asking, hey, can I tap into Etsy? If I can tap into uh, eBay. The first thing is say eBay API documentation. The first thing is to see if there's even documentation. <laughs> okay, so the first step is, is there documentation? The next point is just right here. It's like, I want to see if I can find blank easier. Okay, well, write that out. What would I like to know about eBay? Hmm, maybe I want to know about hmm, their listings. Wait a minute. They have something for, for listings. They have something for this. They have something for that. So now I'm going to be able to know a little bit more. Now, again, this doesn't mean you automatically know how to use this, but now I'm in the right area and I know that the documentation exists, okay? For example, someone asked me, they're like, I wanna have the TikTok API. Well, yeah, so would I, but they're not allowing that right now, right? So it's important to even see if, it's, if, it's, if they're allowing it to be public. Okay, now that you have that, now it's important that we try it out and we try something. Now, I'm gonna use the Star Wars API and see how we can do this. Okay, we're going to use this API because it's pretty straightforward and it's nice and it's not as complicating and we can get started. Okay, so if you see any kind of API, you're going to look for either something that says documentation or it might say get started or an introduction. Now, here's a couple clues because when I see this, this says this means a lot of words to me and I feel like bad about myself and I don't even know where to begin. So, what I do is I first look at getting started and there's going to be a route. There's going to be a route where the call is going to be, right? Now, if we look at this, right, there's gonna be a route. Have we seen something similar? Remember, what is hemp oil? Wait a minute, there's a route, right? There's a beginning section of the call. The call is going to be an HTTPS request. It's gonna be a website, right? So we have a route. 
And this root is going to be right here. Now, they're giving you an example because they're saying, hey, slash planets, you're going to get this information. Okay, all right, that's good enough. Now, this is the getting started one. Excuse me, down here, same thing, base URL. The base URL is the root URL of all of the APIs. All of the APIs. So whatever you're going to request, it's always going to start with this bad boy right here. Again, depending on which API documentation, they're going to have different base URLs. They're going to have different routes. So you're always looking for the base one to get started. Now, I get easily confused, and I'm all over the place. So I take that. And what I do is I'm just using Notion. I just pick a section. Where's my code thing? Where is it? Did I pass it? I'm going to have it right here. I just put it right here just so I have it, just so it's easier for me to have. So I know I have something like this, right? So I have the root. Now, remember what we said before? We said we're going to work with intention. What do I want to happen? Because there's so much in this documentation. What do I want to happen for the API request? I have an example right here. Let's say, for instance, I want to look for a first movie. I want to look for a movie. Where would I look for here? Well, because I have the base URL already here, I can now look at the resources and I'm going to say, can I look through this file? Can the librarian find me by films? Yeah, they can. And the way the endpoint is going to be the film right there, adding the film, and then slash one telling me what number it is of the film, right? So the example is, again, I have the root URL, and now I've got the slash films slash one. Now, if we're saying, wait a minute, I'm not sure about this. Remember, if you've seen any other website and they're going into different pages or different categories, you've seen slashes before. You've seen different slashes because it's organizing how you're going to be getting that information. The same thing with an API call. Okay. So I'm going to add, and I have this. Say, for instance, you're like, Doc, I don't know. I don't know. I, I want to look for a character instead. I'm looking for Luke Skywalker. Okay, cool. Resources, people. All right. So I'm doing the API request slash API slash people. Oh, that's how I get a person. That's how I get a person. That's how I'm going to be finding it. But wait a minute, Doc. You're showing me this slash one? No, no, no. I need to search for someone. I don't need this. Wait, does this allow me to search? Does it allow me to search? Getting started, I go and it says searching. And now it just gave me the parameter that I can search for a character, search for someone, and it gives me this. Now, remember where it says question mark search? Look at over here. Looks kind of familiar if we look at this. So there is a lot of standards, a lot of overlaps of what's happening. You're seeing that you're just talking to a system and seeing if you get this result. Okay, all right, but this sounds good. We're all right. I'm not sure. You're showing me all this stuff. I don't even know if I'm successful at this. I, I don't want to go too far. No big deal. No worries. Let's run an example. Let's go back to people. I'm going to be looking for Luke. Luke's going to be there. He's number one. That's fine. I'm not. I'm going to just see if I can even pull this and see if this example works. All right. So if I wanted to pull this and I want to see if I want to verify an API, there's a great free website and it allows you to test your API. And when you test it, you can see if it's going to work or not. Now, right here, if you look at it, I can then go and test very specific APIs. Now, remember when I said, like, there's different ways to get information, to put information. Right now, we're only worrying about get and get. Just imagine I'm going to go get that material. I'm going to go grab it and bring it back to me. That's a get request. Okay, so I have get right here. And I want to get the first character. I want to get the first character that appears in Star Wars. So I'm going to grab this example. I'm going to put it in. Now, before we do this, remember, keep in mind, do not worry if you make a mistake the first time. It's all right. It's no big deal. This is easy. We'll just press it. And if we get an error, we get an error. No big deal. So we put it in here. We said get. Let's see. We have the URL, URL here. I'm going to say send. Okay. Request. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting an error. Not found. Am I doing something wrong? 
maybe I need to pull out the HTTPS, send, got it. Okay, so you notice I first had it with HTTPS, it's already doing that for me, so it's redundant. And now I just got my search result, it's pulling, okay. Now, right here, open source, oh wait, sorry, I saw that, let me delete this, clear all. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Let's try it again. Let's do that. Cancel. Okay, not found. Okay. Let's clear again. Let's do this. Take that out. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Pull. Now, when we're looking at it raw there, let's take a look. Requesting people, untitled, parameters. And so what I'm doing right here is I'm checking, wait a minute, maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Maybe I made a mistake. Let's see. I'm going to go over here, check it. URL, let's go here. Clear all. Okay. Let's go with slash people slash one. Cancel. Open source development ecosystem hive. Raw, okay, it's fine. Scripts, request, okay, cool. So what I do is, and this is okay, this is all right, this happens. So what I'm gonna do is look from the beginning of what I did, did I do everything correct? Did I have everything in the right places? I've done it before, so what did I change? What am I looking at? What could possibly be the problem? Okay, let me check it. Gonna do this again. Pull it over. URL, gonna do this. I'm gonna back up, make sure nothing is there. Have that, make sure that is fine. Titled requests. This shouldn't, uh, beta test for character. Let's try that. Make sure that's there. Quest, send, collection, environment. I don't have to worry about that. Put that for character. Error, try again. Okay, network error. Okay, that's fine. Not an issue, not an issue. So as we go through this for a second, I'm just going to check. I'm going to check for a second. Now, as we're right here, usually, and as you can tell, it's user error. I just did something wrong, and it's something very intricate that I'm just, it's not even intricate, it's something that I'm missing. So I'm going to run a report real quick and see what happens. Now, as we're getting this done and seeing what happens real quick, I want to ask, or let me know any questions. And now, by the way, this happens. If you've done a project, things happen. But it's more of just working back of it's something simple. Either I missed the slash or I'm doing something like that. So as we take questions, I'm going to just work on this and I'm, I'll have a solution for you in a second. So any questions like that, I'll take right now. If you're not breaking something, Doc, you clearly aren't doing it right. <laughs> got it. So <laughs> like the, some of the most interesting projects I've done, like had such strange errors and bugs and stuff. And I, Actually, I, I spoke to the Webflow team when we were working on some uh, some experiments with them, and like, yeah, we you know we we know you're doing the right project because we've we're seeing errors we've never seen before. <laughs> so, yeah, with APIs, I mean, right now we're doing something cool with with schema where we're trying to tap into like creating extensions and stuff to automate you know um, uh, automate processes and so on. And it's like it's such interesting API integration. That's why I was like, I definitely have to be here. Other than seeing all of you again, it's great to. I hope it's been a good yeah, year for you guys so far, man. It's great to catch up with you guys again. Yeah, man. Yeah, we just want to say, just want to say hello, and, and um, it's it's great to it's great to um, hear hear your approach to APIs. Hey, man. No, I appreciate you being here, man. You're doing great things, by the way. I already saw that you messaged Dan the other day. We had to catch up for sure. Yes, please. Let's make it happen. <laughs> How's things with you, Priyanka? We haven't spoken either in a long time. I think I the have... was the last time. I, I missed your, your talk last time, but I'm, I'm, I'm up for this one. I have a really basic <laughs> question, which I'm really, really embarrassed to ask, but I've got to ask it. 
um, API documentation. This is basically the 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 sort of the out uh, the what you're plugging into, what, where you're grabbing the information from. So is that what it, I'm, I'm assuming? So with with API documentation, you it is how can I put this? It's the language or the right kind of. Yeah, it's the language to talk back and forth. So it's very similar to if I yell out to Max, I'm like, hey, Max, get me a cup of coffee. And then Max says, like, got it. Or he might say, like, what coffee? So when I when he says got it, that's a 200 call, which means great. It goes through. Excellent job. Yeah. And we're speaking the same kind of language yeah. when you're going to be doing things like this you're going to have to put in very specific parameters like this, like the call. That's what we're doing. If if um, Max is saying like, I don't know what that is, or I don't know what it is, that's where you're getting the four or four. So where I'm getting an error and it's saying, I don't know what you're talking about. That means it's not understanding. I'm saying something wrong that it doesn't understand. Mm. And so the way that you're structuring the API call or you're structuring how you talk to the to the system when you have API documentation, that is a standard way for anyone to interact and to get a response. And so API documentation is really important is, I want this kind of response. I want Max, there's a difference if I ask Max for a cup of tea versus I, Max, I would like $100,000. That's, he might not say yes to both of those things. <laughs> he might say yes to one, he might say no to the other. So the same way you're going to be going out through that process. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. So, yeah. Doc, I've got a question. Where are you pulling this data like into? So you want to get like the name of the 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 um the Star Wars person like where where is that going? Like uh, I'm just intrigued. So you're saying where am I getting the information from or where am I now that I have the information where am I putting it? Yeah, where's the kind of destination that you want to like send it to because at this point it's kind of yeah sort of in thin air, like where, where do you want, yeah. to, want it to go? That's a really good question. So as we're going through this, um, with Hopscotch, I'm just pulling it in. It's allowing me to now have the response in basically a very easy format or a very easy, I would say a landing page to see if it's even working, depending on where you want it. Like, for example, Integromat, if I pull in an HTTP, so if I'm pulling in the endpoint, if I'm pulling in the, uh, the API, I'm pulling it in. I'm then in Integromat telling it where do I want it to go. I'm telling it I want it to go to Airtable. So Integromat is the in-between where it's saying, here's this information. Oh, we've got it. Okay, here's where it's going to be going through. And then you want it to put in this way, in these columns, in these rows like this. And so it depends on what you're using. The same exact way if you're using something like with Landbot, Paperform, or others, they might be using an API call to do it. And the difference between an API call and like a webhook, an API call, you're doing different things where you're talking and having those things. Uh, a webhook is different, almost like you're putting something in the water and you're waiting for something to go by and you're pulling it up and you're doing that one action every time this passes through. So the webhook, it's hooking and then it's doing this over here. So sometimes people will say like, What's the difference? Like that would be the main difference. API calls, again, more intricate. You can be doing a lot of different things. And of course there's better, more technical ways to explain, but API calls, you can be doing technical, different things. Webhook, you're waiting for an action to happen. It's hooking and then it's going to deliver to do a certain thing. Go, yeah. No, that's great, thank you. No Doc, worries. If, if you think about it, Doc, the Slack is like, its entire success is based on on its API, right? That you have yep. these thousands of applications you're hooking into that chat interface. That's all. That's in primarily their selling point is that you could just hook in your app or you know Zoom or whatever, like, and in different ways. So essentially, like in the case of Zoom, you could set set up a, a system where okay, when the user starts a call, automatically everyone in the chat gets a link to it and they can just immediately hop into it. For example, so. They all they're doing is taking that data for that link and saying this is what this is how I want you to display this link if a user does this. So it's really just about sharing sharing the content between these tools, 
Uh, and the, the API documentation gives you that, you know, I really enjoyed what Doc was just showing earlier about like, here's all the layers that you can access. There's people, there's Star Wars, there's this. And then the designer, a product designer, let's say like me would come up and say, here's how I would want to take this data and display it here. I yep. think this is the most useful way where this, this data could come in. Um, and just as an example, Doc, I'd love your feedback actually on this. Like in China, we're working with a company right now where like they have like this directory of you know, 10,000 factories and they want to create this API where it's basically like the Wikipedia for factories. And they have so many layers of data that they gathered over many, many years. And now I'm approaching this API and I'm like, okay, I thought I knew what APIs were. <laughs> and then I saw their API. <laughs> I'm like, this is scary, like compared to any API I've ever worked with in my life. So it was perfect timing to actually hop on this call with you. So now it's like, they're like, well, we want to provide this API to other companies so they could like take some parts of that data and create their own little search engines. Like, you know, like we want to curate the best healthcare products, you know, uh, uh, from that directory. And it's like, I just saw the system of how this came together. I'm like, this is ingenious. <laughs> like the way they're, you know, this, this network that they're creating. So this is actually perfect timing that we're talking about this. I'd love your feedback on that. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think it's, so I'll put it this way. And so let me back up and people are like, wait a minute. So first of all, I'd like to say, when you can't find something, you're like, is something working or it, it's not working? Okay, that's fine. Go back to the beginning and see if it's something that's working or if it's something in the system. I just did it in Postman. I pulled it and you can see it pulled the information right there. So we'll talk about this in a second and what Postman is and how it works. So the ending is it worked. I could be just doing something in Hopscotch. I'm just missing something for briefly, but just pulled in in Postman. So the first thing I would say is sometimes it's error, sometimes it's the system, I don't know. So then for me, for my sanity, and so I don't heavily drink, I just go to a different program and say, wait, what I planned on doing, is it me? Or maybe something's going on with their system, is something happening? Okay, so right here, we're getting, um, it, it's, it's working. So now I'm saying, okay, maybe I did something wrong in Hopscotch, maybe I'm switching something. So that's one thing, we'll get to that. Uh, the second thing, exactly, Sako, so what you were talking about is when I'm looking at structuring or something like that or looking at something that's that advanced, what I usually do is I go to a custom custom developer that is used to either doing it with another language and see how they would approach the project, and then I work backwards. So to me, it's like I feel bad... When I read too many things about APIs, first of all, when I read things about API, it's dry and I fall asleep. So I have to pay for someone to teach me what's happening. I, I'm just not that type. Some people, they can read it and they're like, doc, like it's this, it's this, like, what are you doing? I need someone to explain to me what's going on. So my hack is just saying, hey, you're good at this proficient, this kind of API call. Tell me how to do this. And then that's how it is. The, the other guy, if you look at Drew from um, from Builder, Drew, we were talking about what's going on. And I was like, hey, I'm doing this and this. He's like, I was like, I, so I'm putting it in the environment. And we'll talk about this environments, what that is. But I was putting an environment in Postman. And then I was working on OAuths. He's like, oh, yeah, I just do that from scratch. I make my own OAuths. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what that means. And I don't know how to do it. So <laughs> then I have to. I just ask Drew, can you show me how to do that? And I record the session of what they're doing. And then I see if I can repeat it. So I, I try not to work too hard <laughs> when there's something like that. Saka, that's a lot. I'm like, I need someone else to do this. So there are very specific types of people that are proficient in different types of API calls. Ones that are great at like banking information, Stripe, ones that are great for um, for marketplaces, ones that are proficient at. I look for different experts that have experience with those kind of API calls and structuring that data. And then I just say, can I just pay for your, your time consulting? And then going from there. Well, let me put it this way. Whatever API they have is like three times the size of Wikipedia. <laughs> so yeah. when, when they said, well, I just told them, I said, listen, uh, how about we just focus on like i'll just focus on the product the actual experience and like you can have somebody else who really loves discussing this api to like jump i'll i'll, I'll hook you up with doc 
He really loves APIs. <laughs> Listen, I'll let him take care of this. <laughs> and if, if you want it done, if that kind of thing at that level, um, yeah, get someone that's that has the experience and not mess it up for you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Hopefully, and hopefully that helps, man. But no, definitely, I have three different ones. I have one guy that works on. He does. He does. He builds all of the APIs for. Um, how, how could I put it basically for power systems or power grids, he goes okay. in, in, in Python, he just builds out all their code and does all of those things. So he's in charge of all of distribution of all of that energy. I'm like, I need your help there. And then he'll just build out a custom script. And then he's like, this is how you would break it out. This is how you would implement it for the most part today. <laughs> hopefully you're not trying to do that in this um in this call but yeah there's always ways to get better for sure and knowing more um well, max do you mind if i'm going to show you two more things and then and then all questions and everything like yeah, that yeah of course yeah yeah that sounds great okay so real quick if you if you look at what was happening i'm going to go and show you like what what was doc doing he said that he was good at this but he clearly not so that is a fair assessment that is true <laughs> so what i did was i i went over in postman now Postman's a little bit more advanced, but what I would like to do is when I, when I'm first in Postman, there's a couple things to keep in mind that, so it doesn't, um, overwhelm you. What I mean by that is I'm just going to look at just three tabs or three things in Postman, and we're really going to only focus on two. So you don't have to worry about all of these other things. If you're doing more advanced things, yes. But just keep in mind collections, it's where what you're about to do or the collection of what you want to do with that application or that area. So, for example, I just said, like, this is a new collection. I want the collection. Let me move. I have way too much stuff over here. So my collection over here, I'm going to name it. I'm just going to say beta roll, oh, roll call. OK, so I have that beta roll call. I have that and it says add a request. I add a request and right here, I'm saying the same thing. Now, if you look at it, right, it look kind of similar to what we had before, right? So I'm gonna say new request. I'm gonna just say um, Star Wars movie. Yeah, <laughs> that easy. So I'm gonna put that right there. Then I'm gonna have get right here. I'm pulling it over. I'm gonna say, okay, can I pull it? Sending the request and then it worked. I got a 200, which means it's success. Just like when I was talking to uh, Max and I was saying, hey, Max, get me some tea. And he says, OK, 200 is the OK. So he's saying, yeah, I got you. Here's the information. Now, here is just an example of where we're pulling. But later on, depending on where you want it to go again or how you want it to be displayed, that's the next section. But before you're worried about, hey, I want it to be displayed on this page like this, it's important that you first, excuse me, verify that your call, your API call was successful. So that's why you're always checking if the API call is first successful and then we'll bring it in. Are we gonna bring it into Integramat? Are we gonna do all of these things? And that's the first portion. So again, to review before we go on, it's first identifying what am I going to be doing in the API documentation? What do I want to happen? Can I look for the exact call that I want to happen? And then testing the call before you start building. The main problem that I see a lot of people is, and I fault myself too, a lot of times I'd say, oh, this looks great. I'd grab it, put it in Integromat, do all of these things. And I'm getting all these errors. And I'm like, well, the, it's Airtable's fault. It's this person's fault. No, it's my fault because I didn't check if it was the right, even the right call first. Then we can go on from there. Qu questions about that first. Max? Okay, cool. Now, there is something that I want to show, and we're going to be doing more, like, more details on this because I'm really excited about this one. And this is, I'm, I'm going to be going and showing you something called Canonic. Okay. So if you're not familiar with Canonic, um, I'm, I'm rating it probably going to be one of the top three platforms of 2021. They're still new. They're young, 
but the things that you're going to be able to do with this thing is incredible. So we're going to look at why this is a thing that's good for APIs and why you first need to understand calls before you go into this. So Canonic allows you to now create your own databases in your own structure very quickly. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to say new project. I'm going to call this new 100 days, uh, 100 days of no code test, right? And say, for instance, I'm going to be building out an API and I'm going to, this is about education. And what I think I'm going to do is maybe build out tools and then associate it who built out that tool. So here it allows me to create a project. Do I want to create it, import it, or link it? I'm going to create my own database right here. So it's going to create a, a, um, a section for me. Now I'm going to say no code tools. Now you're going to see in a moment, you're like, what does this have to do with APIs? Hold on one moment. You're going to see no code tools right here. Now here it's saying no code tools. I'm going to say field and I'm going to say name of tool. Okay, great. Now here it's saying the name. And if you're familiar with tables or anything like that, you might notice like keys or foreign keys perhaps when you're dealing with identifications and you're associating. So right here, it's already building this out for me. So name of tool, this is great. I'm gonna say yes. And then maybe I wanna say field and I want to now have field and I'm going to have image um, picture of tool. Okay, that's great. I have it right here. That's great. So first it's allowing me to have a list. I can also have different de developers, or I can say um, uh, like name of creator, something like this. So if I'm thinking about perhaps if I'm thinking about, let's see, and I'll name just first name, first name. Okay, so how would I use this for the first thing? Maybe I'm thinking about a no-code tool. I might think about like, um, Webflow, or I might think about uh, a template in Webflow, and I might say, okay, I know Sako is going to do something about this. I'm thinking about civilization, right? So now I can have the association. Here, I can click here and I can say field. And then here it's saying, what do I want to do? I want to link something. And what do I want to link? I'm going to link name of creator. Okay, name of creator. That's great. Stop tempting me, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, All right, name of creator. Oh, and then I'm having, okay, name of creator right there. And I'm gonna say name of creator. Okay, so I have that. So now we have an association with the two tables, right? Now, if we're having this, I can deploy this. Deploy, it's gonna make this. And there's a reason why we're doing all this. It will come back and then we'll have questions. There's a reason, there's a reason. So we're having all this stuff together and it's connecting, great. Okay, so first I can have uh, the CMS and then I have my API docs. So right here, deployed successfully, excellent. Let's take a look. I can first look at the CMS. I can see now if I wanted to use this as a database, I can add the picture, I can add the name, select the creator, all those things. But if we look at this right here, Wait a minute, wait, did it just do what I thought it, it, it made all the documentation for an API. So my database, now people can access my database after I structured the database how I want it. Other no coders, other people can now make API calls from my database. And so all of that work of creating documentation, API documentation, Canonic just did it for me. It just structured everything for me. So say for instance, I have a database of all of Sako's great templates. Now, if I'm saying, if you want all of those templates that, by the way, I've already categorized all of those things, you can now tap in and call, hey, I'm looking for this kind of template. I'm looking for civilization, PS4, blah, blah, blah. It is now possible because it has structured and made all of the, the API requests. It can be right there. Also too, one last thing, I can also then have more automation or workflows based on different things that happen. So right here, I can say either I created a new no-code tool, I can then have it send a message 
do something else for this functionality. I have a different thing with my endpoint. You can do all of those things right here on Canonic already built out. So there's more coming soon with this platform. I'm going to stop there for questions. But the main thing is even doing more advanced things like this, it's important to understand that understanding APIs and understanding the basics will now allow you to tap into a, another wider world of different things. And so understanding the, the basics here, this allows you to move fast. And one last thing, and I'll stop, Max, I promise. There's something that we develop. It's just the no-code API canvas. So if you've seen the Lean Startup canvas or anything like this, this is very similar, but this allows you to work through why do you need this API call? <laughs> so you have all this power, but again, don't just approach, I want to do some crazy stuff. Work with purpose. Work out what you need to happen. Does a solution already exist? Are there things that you're going to do different? Work through why you need this for your project. And then this will allow you to be a lot more fulfilled when you're going down this rabbit hole. Okay. See, but any questions, Max, or anything you want me to do, I'll do. I just, yeah, just open it up. Um, I was going to ask actually, like, I, I don't know if this is this is super dumb. So, how, so okay, so you've got your um, your fields, your um, for that that tool database that you've configured right there, where you've got your tools and then the creators connected to those tools. Um, what if I can't be asked to like actually? Go and find all those tools and input data into that database. How do I pull in all those tools um, and all those creators without actually having to do any work, really? That, that's a good question. So right now, Canonic's working on that because so right now they're building it for the point of someone already building their own, but you're saying connect it to someone already has the APIs, do that connection, then it already populates your database. And then you have the API documentation that people can pull from you. Yeah. So it's not there yet. That's their next phase. So they're going to be very specific how it's going to be connecting to other sequences or other APIs to be able to pull that in. Like, for example, I asked them that about uh, the YouTube analytics API, I wanted to pull very specific stats into my own database I want to create. It's not there yet, but yeah, hopefully they'll give details later this year. I'm all about that, man. I'm all about that. Um, also too, there, this is just a, um, this is just one, if anyone knows Edmund, uh, this was a question that he had. Um, and this, I think this might help a lot as well for ones that are just getting started. I'm just doing this real quick. So say, for instance, a lot of times you'll say like, Doc, that was really great, but I don't care about none of that. I am just trying to do something in Tegramat, what's going on. And so that's why if you look into the search engine, what we're going to have, that's why we have the overview videos, the platforms you'll need, like exactly what you'll need. And then there's a walkthrough video and then a step-by-step -step guide. By the way, shout out to Mark again, who taught me how to do this from using this, excuse me, this reference for beer. This is exactly walking through how you go get the call, how you put it into Integramat, how you go and do the call step by step. And so now, again, we're building out very specific use cases for you to now how, how you're over here using Integramat, Pipe Dream, Zapier, whatever you want, and how you get the results that you're looking for. So I might have missed some in the chat too. Yeah, thank you for putting Edmonds um, sure. in the chat. No, that's great. There was one actually from BJ um, earlier, and I think you you did touch on it, but just not sure if you have anything else to expand on it, but um, the difference between webhooks and APIs, um, any expansion on what you'd already like touched on or anything that would be useful? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the main thing for me, uh, I mean, and first of all, I'm not... So one thing I always like to let people know, I am not a, um, uh, I'm not an expert in a lot of things. I, I like to learn a subject in order to create a project that I'm looking for or to make money quicker. And that's my main drive. So when I'm looking at these things, if it's a use case, then I will go to find more. So just keep in mind the different aspects of different ones. I'm always like, go find someone if you want something in depth. For example, if I'm looking at webhooks, there are 
a lot of different companies that allow you to work with webhooks because it's very limiting and you're doing one action. So if I'm thinking about that, I would say, think about the platform of what you're trying to accomplish and then work backwards. For example, I love a company called Viral Loops and I also like Paperform. Viral Loops is working with their creating contests in viral content and it's doing something with the webhook, a very specific thing. So I'm looking for, okay, that webhook, you're telling me it can do certain things just like a fishing rod or like a hook. I want to know what bait that is or what action is it going to do when I have the webhook? Just because someone says like, oh, we have webhooks, that doesn't mean you're out of the woods and it can do everything you're looking for. You have to find out exactly what the purpose is and, and does it serve what you're trying to do. Got you. Um, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Doc. Um, we've got one from Priyanka around um, just just hearing about any um, examples of APIs that you've used in, in projects that you've, you've created, um, any sort of use cases and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So th there's a couple different ones that, that I use. Well, I'll just show you in real time right now. Um, so there's two. Right now we're building out with YouTube, the YouTube API. And the reason I need it is Running reports from the uh, from Creator Studio, and if Mark's here with Mark Fletcher, he knows if you use Data Studio with Google, it still doesn't give you all of the right details that you need. So, for example, I'm looking for click through rate, I'm looking for average view duration, and very specific stats. And because of that, I cannot just go into the studio and ask them to send me a report every week. You have to do it by hand. So, I'm using the YouTube API and now having that automatically send out the five stats that I'm looking for, and then it will give me those reports every five days automatically. Now, again, could I do it manually? Yes, but I wanna be able to scale it, but also I want other people on my team to have it, and I don't wanna do it every single time. So that's one way. Um, the other thing that I'm using it for right now, and this is what we're probably gonna do for the next six months, I'm really probably gonna dive deeply into Google Cloud Platform and working with AppSheet and those things. So I'm going to be doing a lot with more, I'll give you an example. Um, there are certain manufacturers that work with Tesla and do very specific things and they just want their data already to be sent over. So now we're just having, when they complete a form, they're doing an API request and it's already sending the information to the rest of their team. Now with that information as well, you can hook it into Slack as well. So we're having it into very specific channels. So now other people can get involved or for their specific department, they can now be notified when certain parts are being ordered and stuff like that. Yeah, um, no code. Oh yeah, you just said, so AppSheet, AppSheet was bought by Google. So AppSheet was independent. Now it's under the brand. And it's really an interesting case because you can do things with AppSheet such as like, if you're familiar with Adalo or if you're just used to setting up databases, AppSheet, depending on your industry, it will do best practices and already set up relational databases for you. And you don't have to go in and do it yourself. It will already make the database um, you know, connections for you. Also too, if you're looking at things like Google Cloud Vision or things where you're taking pictures and you're looking for OCR, it will already start recognizing patterns. And instead of you creating the API calls that you need with Cloud Vision, with AppSheet, because it's one of Google's platforms, it will automatically do all of that integration for you and build out the patterns based on your pictures. That's awesome. Um, I think we've got yeah a few more minutes. Uh, so yeah. yeah, anyone got any more questions for for Doc or anything you want to go through as well, Doc? If you've got any more, um, you know, I mean, you through. you just you just point me in which direction. I, you know, I can talk about this too much. So like, if you want me to talk about like, I think APIs. The real thing I would say is APIs. If you understand what you want to do and you want so much more control over your workflows or what you're trying to do, APIs are that next level. I, I think that when you're dealing things with Integromat, Zapier, I, I still use that a lot too. Number one, once you start learning how to be more intricate of what you want, you can add. Have you ever been in Zapier and you're like, man, I want this one thing to happen. You want something to happen. And maybe it's not there yet in Zapier. With When you're understanding uh, API requests, you can, for the most part, if they have the documentation set up the right way, 
then you can be able to accomplish those things. You'll be able to go in. So there's just so many different things that you're going to be able to do. I think we missed a question. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, like does, that, Vijay. Yeah, Vijay here, I have a question. So when, when you're using Canonic or Airtable or any of the other underlying um, data platforms, which expose APIs to you, how do you then handle GDPR and all the you know California data requirements and all that stuff? Because um, you don't basically handle where your data is being stored or how your data is being processed. All that you're concerned about is give me the data and I'll just make sure I show it beautifully on the front end, right? So how do you then take care of those requirements and stuff? Okay, that's a really good question. So there's a couple different things to go through that. So this goes back into what kind of requests you're doing. And then we're talking about industry level as well. So if I'm looking for very specific ones, let's go top level and then we'll go this way. Industry standards. So it depends on your industry standard and what country you're in to make sure that you have everything that you need with security, right? So if I'm being HIPAA uh, compliant, if I'm in the States or in the US and they need certain types of things in place for before I even use APIs, I need to know that. If I'm worried, not even worried, if I'm looking at the structure of what kind of calls I'm getting or all those different things, again, it depends on the specific type of calls, but then we go into the, the OAuth and looking at what am I setting up around that. For example, if I'm looking at if I need a secret key or if I'm doing something like that, am I already building out the environment where I'm having that security in place? So it's more of the turning key versus just calling that information. The second part is also where you're housing the data. If I'm just doing get calls, what am I doing around that? So Canonic actually has, they're going to be doing a breakdown series coming up about the security that they do around their databases when they're building them out. So it also depends, just like you were saying, depending on what you're doing, how you're structuring it, the security that you need. Miriam, Miriam from Softer actually has a whole talk planned, I think, because they use Airtable and they talk about the security that they have to work around in all the infrastructure of data. So those would be my basic answers. For more specific, it would depend on the type of requests and if I'm doing it with OAuth or anything like that. The second thing is I would depend on the exact industry if I was in construction versus health or anything like that, I would, um, I would make sure that I know the requirements before I would offer to be able to do, you know, these kind of requests for that kind of company. Thank you, though. No problem. Thank you for that question. Really good question. Thanks, um, yeah, so I think we're, we're on the hour. Um, is there, uh, it, this has been awesome. I've, I've learned so much. Um, it's, <laughs> Is there anything you'd um, like to say, Doc, before we before we, we, we wrap up proceedings? No, no I, I would just say thank you so much, Max. And also, too, the reason I, I, I talk about this is I couldn't find a resource that could be in layman's term. It, it felt like they weren't talking to me in learning this. I'm not saying this is the end all and this is, you know, you, you have to go by this. But what I do is really make sure that you structure your notes, structure what you're learning, how it helps you to improve as a no coder, you creating whatever you want, make sure that you're getting the resources, make sure that you're collecting what helps you get to the next level and constantly write down notes, record videos, and try to explain it to others because that will help you to have better notes so you can help others in the future as well. So. I love that actually, because that actually really links nicely with 100 days, like sharing what you're learning every day. So um, yeah, do that. <laughs> uh, do what Doc said. Um, so um, yeah, that's that's a wrap then. Um, thanks so much, Doc, for your time. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's been really, really enjoyable. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all on Slack or Twitter um, over the next week and see you oh, at the next workshop. One last thing too. Yes. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to drop his... Um his information. So Mark Fletcher, if you go spreadsheetcoach.com, if you go yeah. over there, probably one of the best in the game. I'm not yeah. joking. Um, because Mark, Mark is probably one of the best teachers I've, I've seen with APIs, especially getting started. So really reach mm -hmm. out to him. 
really um he, he's putting out a lot of new videos coming up too so highly encouraged yeah i second that yeah absolutely um don't sleep on mark uh <laughs> yeah he's got some good stuff coming cool we'll see you guys thanks so much again and uh speak soon yeah hey <laughs>